In a moment, we'll go to Andrew Cotter and Lawrence Donegan. First, Rory McIlroy, very much the favourite going into the Masters 2019. I know I've played well enough and I've shot enough good scores around here over the years that I'm going to have a, a good chance to, to do well here. So, But it, it's definitely different. My mindset is is a little different in, in terms of still practicing. I'm still getting better at not getting ahead of myself, not thinking about the tee shot on Thursday or not thinking about, you know, what is to come this week. Um, and that's something I probably will never stop trying to learn or, or to practice. Um, but I'm I'm in a I'm in a good place with it. You know, I'm again, you know, I keep saying this, I would dearly love to win this tournament one day. If it doesn't happen this week, that's totally fine. I'll come back next year and, and I'll have another crack at it. So McElroy very zen these days and Tiger Woods hasn't shown much thus far in the season, but certainly believes he's arrived in good form and can compete. I can win. Um, I've proven that I, I can do it and I put myself there with a chance to you know, win the last two major championships of the year last year. And I was right there and um, just needed to have a couple more things go my way and not throw away a couple shots here and there, which I was able to do at Eastlake. And uh, it just, I just feel like that I've improved a lot uh, in the past about 12 14 months, but I've more than anything, I've just proven to myself that I, I can play at this level again. And I've worked my way back up into, into um, you know, one of the, one of the players that, that can win events. Andrew Cotter of the BBC, you're there. I am indeed. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. What a voice. And Lawrence Donegan? I can't believe I'm on with Andrew Cotter. It's a career highlight well, for me, Joe. I'm excited about this because we, we, as Scots, are pretty much whittled down to just having Sandy Lyle at the Masters, so it's nice to get two <laughs> Scots on to talk about the Masters. How many Scotsmen does it take to preview a Masters, is the burning question. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, my favourite stat thus far, no player in the current World Top 10 has won the Masters. Lawrence? Isn't that astonishing? Mm. I read that yesterday as well, Joe. Absolutely. Uh, it kind of proves the... Uh, Proves what Dermot Gleese was saying the other day when you had him on. Nobody knows anything, really. <laughs> We're all just guessing. Uh, yeah, it, it, again, what does that say? Does it say that form doesn't matter? I, I, I don't know. Does it say that Augusta uh, you know, looks for peculiar things in its winners? It's, uh, I mean, it all kind of adds to the, the magic of the, of the occasion, I guess, is, is probably the only sensible thing I can say. Andrew, I presume you're on side at this stage. We're hearing lots about the weather. Talk to us. You know, I, I was on site, but I, I raced back to, to do this at the place we're staying. I'm still pretty much on a golf course um, nearby, but uh, the, I mean, the weather at the moment is glorious. It's very, very warm. It's suddenly very warm and sunny as it is today and tomorrow, and then it gets a little bit um, duller and cooler, but uh, Sunday, it's a bit of a concern on Sunday, but I, I hear contingency plans that they might even, even with a very, very small field and just obviously a few players making a cut, not a few, slightly more than a few, but they have got a, 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 an option of starting because the, the weather forecast isn't too bad for Sunday morning, starting really early on Sunday. So we could we could be seeing the uh, somebody slipping into the green jacket at about, uh, at about midday over here. So uh, there we are, early afternoon finish um, oh, no. over there. So, uh, But again, that's just a contingency. But they always get very lucky with it in terms of getting it done on Sunday because the worst nightmare for anyone is going into to a Monday finish at the Masters. Mm. And is it set to get very wet? Because we're hearing that it, the, it is going to be and the course will lengthen and it may suit the longer hitters. But then equally, I've heard other people wondering if it will get so wet that the par fives might be beyond the reach even of the longer hitters and that will bring the shorter hitters into it. So which hitters are, are, yeah. are, 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 are being suited here, Andrew? Well, I mean, listen, the course is very soft at the moment. I was out there having a little walk around today, and it's still very soft underfoot, but they have got the sub-air system, so they were all working uh, 20 to the dozen, uh, drawing as much moisture out of the greens and some of the fairways as possible. But uh, the course is drying out pretty quickly anyway, and it's, it's very, very hot and dry um, uh, today and tomorrow. So uh, it will be playing long. There's no doubt about that. It'll be playing long in the first round, and... You know, you ha you have to say that that plays even more into the hands of someone like Mac Lewis, no matter how zen he is appearing to be. Mm. And that is certainly the best way of describing it, his press conference, the way his meditation and the way he's going about things. That, but that even with all that, there's so much pressure on him because he knows 
he's he knows he's in the best form of his his life just about um well whether he's putting clicks and all but coming into it he's been so consistently good and the course is pretty much to his his liking and the conditions so you know what a chance yeah that's the general refrain, isn't it, Lawrence, that this is about as good a chance, a ge like genuinely as good a chance as McElroy has ever had or probably will ever have, given his form? Well, we don't know if it would be the best chance that he will ever have because he could be playing brilliantly at the start of next season. But yeah, you know, this is as good as we've seen him. Mm. Uh, and this is, more importantly, it's probably as consistently good as we've seen him. Um, you know, if you look at if there's any knock on McElroy in years past, you know, his highs are very high and his lows are, you know, not super low, but they're low. There's a big gap between the, you know, there's a big margin between both. This time, he's, he's the band is narrower. And and what does that say about him? I think it says that, you know, that he is more consistent, he is more even. And, and if you look at his travails over the Masters past, a, a lot of them have involved blow-ups. You, you know, he's, mm. he's gone triple bogey, bogey, bogey. <laughs> You know, instead of going triple bogey, birdie, birdie. Mm. Um, so he's kind of chucked it on occasion. I mean, that's a terrible thing to say, but you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you wonder if he is in it. It was a great little phrase he said in his press conference yesterday, mind, body, soul. And just the way he said that, and I thought, well, mm, I'm quite impressed by that. And you just kind of wonder if he's got himself into a space mentally where, where he will be able to kind of face up to the adversity that's inevitably going to come his way, mm. you know, and deal with it and, and move on. So, yeah, yeah no, it is. Yeah. Just... Go on, Andrew. Uh, I mean, no, just to go, he, he was, he was I mean, he always speaks well, doesn't he, in press conferences, but he spoke so well yesterday in the phrases you said, you highlighted one. He also said perspective and perception. He was talking about those two words and how he doesn't want to, he's not defined by his results. And again, whether that is just front and just talk and he doesn't really, I, I think he does believe that, that he, you know, he, he, if he, if he wins the Masters, so be it. If he doesn't, so be it. He desperately wants to win it, of course, but that he's, he, you know, him and his career are slightly bigger than just slipping on that green jacket. So, he, I mean, he always talks so, so well, but I, 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 you do genuinely get the impression that he is in a very, good place to use that phrase that he's very happy at the moment and if it comes it comes so as finishes this season i think people are well aware at this stage lawrence are so consistently good fourth and a yeah. fifth and a fourth and a second and a sixth and then he won the players and almost reacted in business-like fashion as if this was just another step on the road to augusta the match play has that strange quality that you don't want to read too much into so he arrives here with the consistency, as, you, as you've mentioned. If you were to break down his game, you know, from tee to green and putting, certainly his, his uh, driving stats, I think, are off the charts good. What, yeah, his general yeah. play, what's jumping out at you with regard to Augusta? Well what's, well, what's jumping out to me is his putting, really. Again, his strokes again putting, you look at it, I think he's T56 on the PGA Tour right now. I mean, that's it's not fantastic, mm. but it's pretty darn good, you know. I, I, and, you, you know, such as his advantage strokes gained T to green, you know, even again, we've said this countless times. If he even puts decently, he wins. You know, because his again, his his game to green is, is just so much better than everybody else, or, or, or a lot better than everybody else. Uh, again, it just it, it seems odd to me that he's, he, Andrew talked earlier about the amount of pressure on him. It's a huge. It's almost like a penalty for playing well in the first start in the year, the first couple of months of the season. It's, I feel I feel sorry for him, mm. but he's got the game. I mean, he's always had the game. That's the thing. It's just you know, it's between the years. Uh, you know, you know, can he can he calm himself? Can he you know accept that things are going to go wrong at some stage, and, and can he deal with it? Yeah. But in terms of his physical game, he's phenomenal right now. Just phenomenal. Because, look, he is human, you know, and he's not immune to pressure. And, and Andrew, I always think, okay, the final round last year, it's hard to forget that put on the well, second. Exactly. But it's I also mean, hard to forget his drive on the first, which was just yeah. bizarre bad. And that was, that was nerves, you know? So he's not immune yeah. to pressure and the scale of what he could achieve here. You know, that, that round, that 74 last year, that missed um, eagle putt in the second where we thought, right, here we go. He, he, you know, he knocks it in so close and he's like, right, but the charge is on, he's going to boss things here and Reed's going to crumble. And suddenly the, it, he didn't and the challenge to Reed had to come from others, from Jordan Spieth and Ricky Fowler. And that round stands out. And also, I know it's a long time ago, 2011, but that final round there, that there have been rounds where he has just, it just lost his way a little bit, and his timing, when it's slightly off, 
means big misses because his cop head speed is so great and his power and his athleticism is, is so great that when his timing is slightly off, as it you know, as it would surely be when you're feeling that pressure of perhaps, you know, entering the Grand Slam Club, then that's, that's the one concern. But, mm. you know, I, that the longer it goes on for McElroy, that the Masters remains the mis- missing piece in the jigsaw, then the harder it's going to get. So you, you kind of want him to get it done as quickly as possible. But again, we stress that this year, you'd say he has as good a chance as possible. But you can make a, a case for a, a number, I think four or five players that have got great chances to yeah. win. What I would say is McIlroy is going to be up there. You know, top top five, top ten certainly, top five probably. Can he just find the one or two shots that are going to give him the, the you know, give him the green jacket? Yeah, it's going to be really fascinating. Uh, obligatory Tiger Woods question, I'm afraid, Lawrence. I was listening to him uh, being interviewed a couple of weeks back, and he was making the point that. Even though his body is back in a good place, he has to be very careful about the amount he practices. And he said he can't really work very much in technique. He said he can only work on his swing with wedges. If he goes and works in technique with any bigger clubs, no, it takes thing, toll on his body. Yeah, sure. I'm wondering, and it's just putting two and two together and maybe getting four. You look at his uh, performances this season. I'm half wondering if he's using these tournaments to work in technique at times because he can't practice the way he might ideally want to practice and if he might arrive here and suddenly blossom before us because the form this calendar year has not quite been what his best stuff was from say British Open summertime on last season. Yeah um, yeah you might, you might I mean these guys do that I mean they always want to win a tournament if they're teeing up at the PGA Tour but yeah. you know, he's on the greens I mean if you look at his, his form this year I think the, the principal problem has, has been he's working the greens and around the greens he mm. hasn't really putted that well you know, and you think he's in a PG Tour event, he's, he's going to try and hold as many putts as possible. It's not about practice at that yeah. point. Yeah, there's, it just all seems a bit flat with Tiger. But again, you, you, again, Augusta, you just think, he's got so much institutional knowledge, he's got so much history there. He clearly plays, knows how to play the course as well as anybody in the modern game still. I mean, he doesn't lose that. But you, you just wonder physically. You know, he, he's won the Masters in the past without his best game. But, I mean, the, mm. the level of talent now, the level of competition is, is just... Ins- you know, Tiger with his A game against Rory with his A game or Tiger with his B game against Dustin Johnson with his B game, pff, that's going to be close. Whereas, in, you know, 10 years ago, you would have said, oh, Tiger with his B game, mm. he's anybody else with their A game. And you just wonder if, if he's there now. But, but, again, that institutional knowledge, you know, that experience, that, that might give, give him an edge. Mm. But he's going to have yeah. to play at the absolute top of his game. But that's why I wouldn't read too much into his results on the PGA Tour this season because, as, as Lawrence was saying there, he, he's, not, he's not going to get fired up for playing those tournaments. As, and, you know, he will be trying, even subconsciously, trying a few things out and not operating in fifth gear. When he comes here, the, uh, the old scent is in the nostrils again and he will be, uh, I think he'll be a different character this week. I think we'll see something closer to the Tiger Woods of Carnoustie or the Tiger Woods of the USPGA last year. When, he, when you know, he came close to winning... His 15th major, so yeah. I think, uh, you know, all I would see from Tiger so far is that he's not been playing dreadful golf. He's been playing some pretty good stuff in patches, so that's that's encouraging as much as anything else. Yeah, and if he does get into that yeah, position... But, yeah, sorry, Lawrence, go, go. It's just see, you, you, the idea that he's using these tournaments of practice. Remember, he's on 80 PGA Tour wins, you know, he's only two behind yeah, the sneak. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, you know that's, a, that's a big target for him, you know, and that's... That's probably, you might say, what would you rather have, to beat Snead or win, win another Masters? You know, it's a toss-up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah no, it's a great no, point. No, no, you're right, you're right. I mean, he will, that, that's right, he, that, that will be the better. So, I, I know, he won't be using Macaulay's practice, but I just, you know, I just think that he will have a different feeling when he's here, and he is a different beast at Augusta. He'll do his usual thing, he'll snap this one off the first down the ninth fairway, <laughs> and he'll find his way out, and he'll work his way around, because he knows how to get around this course, and he can still, his club head speed with his driver is still... You know, pretty enormous. So he's got some distance. So I think he, again, I I think he'll be there or thereabouts. But uh, I think it'll be a bit of a stretch for him to to win. But you know, again, him being in contention will give enough people enough of a buzz about the tournament. Hey, well, think of Carnoustie around the turn last uh, year. I mean, oh, it, was, yeah. it was just un, unmissable stuff. And then I don't know that he wobbled under the pressure. That bogey at ten had the feel of a man who mm. was feeling the stress. Hey, uh, you talk about institutional knowledge. And Donegan, I don't want you to say a bad word about my boy Jordan Spieth here or we're ending this phone call. So uh, his Masters form, tied second, win, tied second, tied 11th, and then last year, even in the midst of terrible form, third, and he was on course 
but for a branch on the 18 to shoot a 62 and take down Patrick Reed inevitably in the playoff. So Jordan Spieth, he said last week on, with the no laying up fellas, Lawrence, that he seems to have yep. fixed his issue, you know, is it an alignment thing? He wasn't seeing the blade uh, correctly, you know, he thought it was open, it was closed, it was closed, he thought it was open, but he's got to the bottom of it, he says, and he did okay in Texas, yeah. a few schizophrenic rounds. <laughs> So, he always uh, do. The, but he, I mean, he does, he does play Augusta brilliantly, doesn't he? Brilliantly. He's the thinking man's course, and he is clearly a thinking man. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't say anything bad about him. You're right. When you get, he plays awfully last year, gets to Augusta and almost wins it. There's just something about the place. But, you know, he, he misses an awful lot of short putts these days. I mean, he looks like, he, to me, he looks like he's got the yips. He takes far too long to... You know, or t- t- takes too long to think about the short ones. Mm. Uh, I, again, he can, again, he can do it, Augusta. But there's, again, there's just too many guys. Too many guys are playing really, really well right now. You know, and I, I and I just don't, th- I just don't think he's there. I don't think he's a player. I, I, you know, you, you, there's a lot of talk about guys whose game just disappears. Yeah. And I just wonder, you know, guys like David Duval or guys like mm. Anthony Kim. I know Kim actually physically disappeared, and I just wonder. You look at Jordan Spieth's technique. I mean, he's obviously a, clearly a brilliant player. Always been a winner from the age. When he was a junior, he was winning golf tournaments by streets. But, you know, I just think when you get to this elevated level of the pros, you know, with that technique, it's kind of quirky. Does that sustain a career? I, mm. I just wonder. But again, you'll probably obviously yeah. go out and win again next week. <laughs> win on Sunday. I do want, Lawrence, I did want to ask you, with your kind of very, fairly yeah. vast knowledge, I, I appreciate his quirkiness uh, tee to green can't disagree with that. Has there been in the history of the game a putter as brilliant as Spieth whose putting has deserted him so quickly and crucially so young? Has that ever happened before? Uh, no, you put me in a spot. If you ask me, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's been guys with quirky swings who've done really well. Ray yeah. Floyd, yeah. Trevino. Uh, no, in terms I can't, of, in terms no. I can't, I can't I'm, think I'm, of any. I, I, I mean, the, the, the great putters strangely seem to remain great putters, you know, Crench and yeah. uh, Crenshaw, Crench, Crenshaw, Lauren Roberts, Brad Fax, and, you know, these guys putted up very well through into the, you know, still putting well. So I can't think of any that have, I can think of many that have lost their game. I can't think of many that have dramatically lost their putting. Most most players' putting tends to, you know, tends to fade a little bit as they get older. Sure. They're not quite as sharp or confident, but, but they don't drop off a cliff in the way that some people lose their whole game. Yeah. I think it was different. Spieth, Spieth's game puts, I think, more than anybody else in the kind of recent history of the game, the rest of Spieth's game puts so much pressure on his putting. Mm. You, you know, the trivia, you know, you take a guy on, you know, a guy like Trevino, quirky swing, but I mean, his game was phenomenal. I mean, his tee green, he, nobody struck the ball better than him. John Spieth's a pretty, for a guy who's, you know, been at the top of the world rankings, rankings for a long time, his ball striking is pretty poor, and that puts a lot, yeah. a lot of pressure on putting. And how long, you know, mentally, it must be so wearing, time and time again, to be hitting the ball out the trees, yeah. you know, and, and trying up and down from 120 yards or 90 yards. I mean, that, 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 that gets you in the end, I think. No, it's true. It's still extraordinary that it's happened to him in his mid-20s in the space of 18 months. I just, yeah. I, I couldn't think of another example uh, like it. So, I don't know, we'll have to see how he goes. A few other names to throw at you. Dustin Johnson, uh, Andrew, the great underachiever when it comes to majors. You know, the talent. He's won twice this year in Mexico and uh, Saudi Arabia against a very good field. And yeah. his 20 PGA yeah, victories. Yeah, I think I think Dustin Johnson, we all look at him and think, oh, he's so laid back. I, I, I think he really feels the pressure in the majors. Uh, far more. There's far more going on under the surface um, in terms of stress than we, we see on the surface because he has got the game and we see it in WGC events. We see it in lots of regular tour events. Yes, he has won a major, but... Um, I actually, I, and I did pick him elsewhere as a, as a, a winner this week, but again, you could pick you know five players yeah. who've got great... Great, uh, great cause for selection. So I, I, he does have a, a wonderful record here, barring that miss year when he fell down some stairs. But I think you know he's likely as not to be a top five player without actually winning it. I, I wonder whether he does have the that he might have a loose shot in there coming down the stretch around Augusta. That really is going to cost you. Yeah, uh, and what about his friend Brooks Kepka? I, uh, you know, you, you figured well, the bizarre. The, it's, Bizarre what ha- what he's done. I'm sorry, it's just the weight you know, loss. He did this weight loss that well, exactly. No, now if he's done it, and I still haven't seen the ESPN body issue. I don't know when it comes out, but you know, reports that he's doing it for <laughs> that to really get ripped for that. You know, if you're doing that, 
and he, you know, he says, put the weight back on now. Perhaps the photo shoot's done. But then you lose, he lost his game, lost a bit of distance, you lose yeah. the tempo, and then that's fine if the weight comes back on, but you've lost then a bit of confidence. Yeah. So you've lost a bit of momentum with your game. Now, this guy is the best player, and was the best player in the world last year, has a great record round Augusta again when he's fit. Why would you do that? It's just extraordinary. Because this ESPN body issue is going to be around for a long time and he wanted to look good. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Actually, I totally agree with him, to be honest. Yeah. I, I say go for it. Uh, it is bizarre. I think he lost I think he lost the guts of 12 yards off his uh, driving length, Lawrence, just for the body yeah. issue. Yeah. Well, the only thing I would say about Kepka, he's not, never really been a momentum player, is he? I mean, you, you, if he wins a major championship, it's kind of... It's kind of out of the blue, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. he'll disappear for a while and look back. And so he, he's one of these guys that gets themselves up for major, major championships. I would say I would much, much rather take Kepka over Johnson, and, mm. and because I think yeah. Kepka's proven himself that to be a you know a, a big time player, you know, a guy who kind of rises to the occasion. To me, Johnson, okay, he's won twenty times in the PGA Tour, mm. but he always looks susceptible to me down the stretch. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not really buying the kind of laid back. Well, I am to a certain extent buying it, but you know, I, I think it, it gets to him. He gets a bit twitchy, especially in the very, very big occasion. Yeah, I think that's I mean, fair. He's won a major championship. And interestingly, Ke won. Kepka did a press conference recently. It was like a nothing. I just caught it on YouTube. It was a nothing tournament, and he was saying. Frankly, he, f he, he, he didn't mean it in an arrogant way, it was just matter of fact. He said, I find this game so easy that mm. in a regular PGA Tour event on the Friday, if I'm not leading by four shots, I just get frustrated and angry and peeved off. Whereas he said, in a major, there, it's the four, four tournaments a year, I can just bring a level of patience. If I have a bogey or a double yeah. bogey, it's fine. And he's trying to replicate that in his PGA Tour events. It's interesting. Most players are trying to take their PGA form into majors. Kepka seems like he could be just a major machine. Like he's, what, won three in no time? Yeah, exactly. Well, with that's that, with, sorry. Yeah, go on, on. Well, I was just going to say that's the difference between Brooks Kepka and, and Tiger Woods. The Tiger wants to win every time he tees it up, you know. Mm. Or he, he did want to win every time he tees it, tees it up. But, I mean, winning's a habit. I, I, I'm not sure that, again, that's sustainable. I mean, winning's a habit. The more you win, the more you like it, the more you get used to it. Uh, yeah. And I know it's, I mean, Kepka's approach has served him well thus far. Three majors, but, you know, what's he, you know he's got a talent to get to five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. Mm. But if he, doesn't get, uh, if he doesn't capture the winning habit, then you just wonder how far he'll go. Yeah. But he, he's got yeah. a chance, I would say. So yeah, uh, you do get, you, when you win majors, you get that knowledge that many multiple major winners have talked about but actually it, it sounds perverse but it's easier to win majors than I think you think when you haven't won them because you think I've got to do something extra special to win a major but actually you just got to cut out a mistake you've got to wait around people will make mistakes around you under the pressure coming down the stretch and so he knows that actually if you just if you just hang in there other people might falter and so that's the way you don't have to do something spectacular it doesn't have to be a challenge it doesn't have to be the greatest golf in your life to win a major that's what Patrick Harrington always talked about when he yeah. went on his amazing run so Brooks Kepka does have that knowledge in the bank that you know that you know he knows how to win a major yeah so as we begin to wrap this up this thing is so open it just feels like golf is more open than ever. Are there any other names that, uh, Lawrence, you want to throw our way? Like we haven't mentioned Ricky Fowler second last year, eight top five major finishes. You have to feel he'll win soon. Uh, John Ram. You've got Paul Casey knocking around. People like the look of him. Molinari's off the back of a brilliant year. And there's about 30 other guys as well. Well, I'm kind of interested in, in, in how the weather plays out. You know, you go, you, you know, the rains, off course, you would think it would play in the long hairs, but you look back, you know, the two worst masters of recent years, 2007, 2008. Zach Johnson and mm. and uh, and Nimmelman. You know, Zach Johnson won the Masters without going for a, a par five and two. Mm. Uh, and you, you know, the course, I mean, I know the longer hitters are even longer now, but if the course is incredibly soft, they've lengthened the fifth by 50 yards or whatever, 45 yards. Yeah. You know, I wonder if that would bring in guys like Xander Shoffley, a guy like that, um, Brendan Grace, some guys like that. You know, great, great ball strikers, very neat and precise players. You have to say Molinari falls into that category, although he's, you know, he's got a bit more length now. Uh, so uh, you know, if I was asked to, you know, a guy like, you know, a guy like Grace or a, or a guy like Xander Shoffley, somebody, you know, somebody, there's all in the leaderboard on Sunday afternoon. There's going to be at least one short hitter in there, and, and you know, a guy like that, a guy like 
softly. Somebody, I know he's, I think he's played one Masters before. Somebody like that, or, or Molinari. I think, you know, he, he's going to be in contention for everything he plays, such as his form right now. Yeah. So somebody like that, so Molinari, play. Yeah, but what, I mean, what, and, you know, Justin Rose, I mean, he's still the world number one. He won't be, no matter what happens this week, after I think Kip is coming up. But, I mean, you know, he's second, 10th second, and he's last... Uh, and he last, well, yeah, no, uh, no, what was he? It was twelve. He's just outside the top ten last year. But he's got a great Masters record. Again, he's not, he's not setting the heaven on fire this year. But there are so many players who do well at Augusta time and time again. And Justin Rose would be one of those. Bubba Watson, you know, he's bubbling away. He's not playing great golf, but again, he's not, he's not horrendous. And then he Please comes know. back here, and, and he just knows what to do around Augusta. No, it's true. I don't think any any of us want to live in a world where Freddie Couples isn't in the top ten on Thursday evening. <laughs> um, so well, listen yeah exactly I guess we've got to wrap this up Andrew a uh, grizzled professional that you are I presume that even you still look around at the azaleas and think this place is pretty cool yeah yeah I've, yeah yeah yes I, yes the party line yes I do I think yeah, okay I, no no sorry give I us the know. truth give us the truth you know Augusta's an amazing place it's an amazingly beautiful sculptured place but it is artifice in everything. It's uh, it's not what it originally was in terms of a golf course, but it is. Look, it's still got some magic about it, and I grew up loving the magic of the Masters. I think sometimes, Lawrence might agree, when you work here for a few times, you, you see, kind of see behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz, and you think, actually, it's quite... It's not an easy place to work. It's uh, it's a... It's an amazing place, is what I'll say, Augusta. It's a strange and fascinating place, and it, all, it, it so often produces, you know, Mike Weir against Len Matisse apart occasionally. It so often produces great drama, and that, I still love that. Yeah. Lawrence, what, what, how, what does the Masters mean to you, or how do you classify the mas- Masters? Uh, well, it, to me, it's always been the start of the, uh, the golf season. I mean, I know we've had a lot of golf so far, but it's always the, uh, you know, it's the, to, you know, Sunday night, parked in front of the TV, Sandy Lyle hitting that shot out of the bunker. You know, for me, it's that. Uh, but there's also, uh, again, uh, it, is, it is a bit like a like a movie set, really. <laughs> it, it, it's so perfectly painted. Uh, and, you, you know, what you see on TV is not really what it really is. Mm. You know, you walk off the premises in downtown Augusta or, you know, Washington Road is, is pretty grotty. Mm. But it is. It's, it's brilliant drama. It's great sport and drama. And, you know, and it's, and it's a beautiful setting. There's also, for me personally, there's a history of the club, but you know, but we'll not go into that. This is probably not the moment to go into that kind of stuff. I mean, it has a long and checkered history. Yeah. But it is a great golf tournament. It it kind of it it places golf and it's my favourite sport. It places it front and centre of the sporting universe. So it's a great it's a great week. Yeah, no, it's true. And look, the history is very, very checkered. And recent history of that, it is a factor. Um, Gents, we'll let you go. Thanks so much, Lawrence. um, Thanks a million for checking in. And Andrew Cotter, enjoy the week. We'll be keeping an eye on the BBC. So thanks again.